Going into any given season, we'll see teams as being favorites to win the Super Bowl, or we'll talk about teams that we're thinking they're going to win their division, but we really don't even discuss the idea of a team going undefeated before the season even starts. We'll have a discussion when a team starts out like 10-0 or 11-0. It just feels like a jinx to even bring it up, and it's also one of the hardest things to do because in the NFL, any given team can beat any given team. Well, that's not the case this year. This year, Tom Brady and the Bucks and people on the Chiefs are openly talking about them really wanting to go 20-0 this season. And Obviously, you want to win every game, but to me, this feels different this year. And today, we're going to talk about the Bucks and whether we think they can actually pull off this feat this year. There's a lot that goes into this, so let's get started. The first thing is obvious is you have to have the team to be able to do this. This is why we're not talking about the Giants making this run. Although they have a ton of talent, they're pretty glaring holes on the offensive line and questions at quarterback. As for the Bucks, for their Super Bowl team, it's really, really hard to find holes on this team. Last year, they had a top defense in the league led by Todd Bowles. Bowls. Their linemen were excellent. They could create pressure with four, and when they sent blitzes, it caused a ton of havoc. They had a great secondary with long, rangy safeties that lurked the entire deep side of the field. They swarmed the ball, and that helped that Devin White is such a freak of nature at linebacker and is actually a missile under control flying around the field. On offense, they had a top three offensive line in the league. They absolutely killed it with their draft pick in trips and worfs. And having this is huge because it helps the run game a ton, but it also gives Tom Brady a clean pocket he needs. Because Tom Brady, when he has a bad O-line, he can still punish you getting rid of the ball in two seconds or less, but give him three, four, five seconds, and he will effortlessly pick you apart. And I feel like they have unlimited weapons to throw to. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown, Gronk, O.J. Howard, Scotty Miller. And these guys just fit so well together because you have big bodies who can punish certain coverages, one-on-ones, and smaller twitchy receivers in the slot. It just works out so good. And somehow, after winning the Super Bowl, they returned all 22 starters, which which is unheard of. I have no idea how they did that. Well, I do, and we'll talk about it later. But usually after a Super Bowl, people show that they can play big on the biggest stage and that they're going to get their max payday on another team. So the Bucks absolutely have a team that can go into any ball game and win. The next thing that we need to look at that's important to make a 20-0 season is the culture. The NFL season is long and draining. Aches and pains, long road trips, short weeks, long practices, mini camps. That the two most important people that create a culture for a football team is the quarterback and the coach. So let's talk about them. Tom Brady is no longer Tom Brady. He's not under Belichick. He's not under the Patriot way. He's in the closing stages of his career, and he's a made man, the undisputed GOAT, and now he is this cocky, fun, social media, outgoing personality, and I absolutely fucking love it. I cannot believe we're seeing this side of Tom Brady. He's going on the barbershop talking about how he lies to corners, hyping them up when he knows they're shitty, and he's going to torch them all night. He responds savagely to almost everyone on Twitter. He's getting drunk tossing the Lombardi trophy from boat to boat. It was hard to like Tom Brady because he was such a square in New England. I always loved him because of his game, but I thought he was so fake and scripted. And now we get to see him be his true self, and I know the players have to absolutely love it. He held his own OTAs, had a sarcastic beef with Bruce Arians, and you can tell they just all really love playing together. And we have to think, what motivates Tom? He has it all. He has the rings, the MVPs, all the records. But what he doesn't have is what the 72 Dolphins have. They get together every year and celebrate to be the only team to have a perfect regular season and postseason. That's what Tom Brady wants. That's what's fueling his drive right now. And I promise he's going to have this team ready to play every single week like it's the Super Bowl. Which leads me to Bruce Arians, the next most important piece of this culture. I knew a lot about Bruce and I thought he would have to act a certain way when Tom arrived because you can't treat the GOAT like everyone else. That's not the case. He was openly critical to the media about Tom's performances every single week. This is not something coaches do to their quarterbacks in general, especially not a guy like Tom. But that's who he is. He has the push it down to the field mentality. He has some really, really good schemes to go along with this too. But he didn't fear Tom, and he's also a player's coach, so people love playing for him. So I think this is why it was a match made in heaven, because Tom needed someone that's just as competitive as he is, but he can also enjoy the Florida Sun, really be himself, and let loose. And the combination of two, I would not sure if it was going to work, but it ended up being the best thing imaginable. The Buccaneers last year really started out to a rocky start, but I think their season really started the second half of week 12 against the Chiefs. They found themselves down pretty big. They made some half signs adjustments and clawed all the way back to only lose by three. This led them into their bye week, and I think Tom and Bruce had some serious talks about the team because at this point they fell to seven and five. During this bye week, though, there were serious doubts if they would even even make the playoffs. 
but the Bucks came out a completely new team. And it honestly looked more like New England, but pieces of Bruce Arians' offense used it all the right times. I think Tom said we need to start playing winning football. I think he got comfortable enough with the playbook enough where he said, let me do my audibles. Let's run motion every play so I can get a better read on the defense pre-snap. Let's run screens, crossing routes, option routes with the running backs. And then we'll take our deep shots with the brilliant schemes you drew up when the timing is just right. And ever since this bye week, they finished 4-0, made it to the wild card and made one of the hardest runs to the Super Bowl imaginable. A stout Washington defense, they're a very good Drew Brees led Saints team that lost to twice already, a red hot Aaron Rodgers MVP Packers team, and Mahomes and the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. This team is only getting better and better, Tom is more comfortable with the playbook and the receivers, he's only going to have better synergy with Bruce, and the defense is only getting better too. They just added first round pick Joe Tryon and another Ed Rusher to add to the rotation. The last thing we need to talk about about is their 2021 schedule, which no team is going to have 17 easy games because it is the NFL, but we can be sure that at least six of them in their, in their division are going to be very favorable. We have a struggling and semi-rebuilding Falcons team, a rebuilding Panthers team, and the Saints without Drew Brees, who had to let go of a ton of guys due to salary cap issues. They do have a lot of tough games against the Rams, Patriots, Colts, Bills, Washington, and Dolphins, but I think in all of these games, whether they're home or away, they should be the favorites and pretty pretty close to equal in the eyes of the sports bettors. So do I think they're going to do it? I think that's such a difficult question to answer because the odds of it happening are so small because this is the only reason it's happened one time in the 100 year history of the NFL. But the combination of their roster, Tom Brady and Bruce Arison's drive, motivation, competitiveness, the experience they all have together now and possibly the easier schedules of the entire NFL, I have to say I like their chances of actually pulling this off more than I have any other team in the past 10 years. They play such a solid and complete game on offense, and they are just as talented on defense. So if any team can do it for all of these reasons, it will be the 2021 Bucks because they're huge goal and they've made it public, so they're going to do everything to go out and get it. But I want to know what you guys think. Is it actually possible to do this? Do you think this will ever be done again? And I know it's going to be a lot harder than the Dolphins because there's actually more games to be played. I know they're not going to have the wild card game again because they're obviously going to win their division, I think, this year. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think the Bucks or the Chiefs have the right to do this? If you want to see a video of me giving a case for the Chiefs and if you think I, I think they're going to do it, let me know down in the comments. Like this video if you like it and make sure to subscribe if you enjoy daily sports content. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for checking out the channel and I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.